when we model or translate a real world problem into a model, like here we are translating the real world problem into linear programming, there are always underlining assumptions of that model. So let's take a look at what the assumptions are for linear programming. So to review a little bit, this is what a linear programming problem is. You see here that we have four characteristics that must exist. So first, we must have the decision variables. Second, we must have the objective function. And then third, we must have a set of constraints. And then finally, we need to have sign restrictions. Before going to the assumption, let's take a look at the definition of a linear function. So for a set of variables, and a set of constants, a linear function looks like this. c times x1 plus c2 plus x2 up to cn times xn. So this one here is a linear function, 2x1 plus x2, because you can think about c1 equals 2 times x1, c2 equals 1 times x2. So this is a linear function. And then another one here is not a linear function because you see here x1 squared times x2. So it's not linear. If we have a linear function and a number b, and then we have this kind of inequality, then we can say it is a linear inequality. So um, this thing here is a linear function so this is a linear inequality and then this is also a linear function so this is a linear inequality but remember that this is not a linear function therefore the third one is not a linear inequality now let's talk about the assumption the first assumption is proportionality which means the contribution to the objective function from each decision variable is proportional to the value of that variable. Let's see what it means here. If you produce one soldier, the contribution is $3 for the objective function. The assumption here says that if you produce four soldiers, then the contribution is proportional such that the total profit is 12 because $3 for each soldier. And then for the additivity assumption, you can say that the contribution to the objective function for any variable is independent of the other decision variables. What it means here is that if the profit of one soldier is $3, it does not depend on whether you produce one train, two trains, three trains, or four trains. So whatever the number of trains you produce, the profit for one soldier always equals $3, such that you can add the profit from soldiers and trains independently because uh, the profit for each unit is also independent. The proportionality and additivity assumptions also apply under constraints. So for example, if you use two finishing hours for one soldiers, then if you produce three soldiers proportionally, you will use six hours of finishing hours. And then if you use two finishing hours for one soldiers, the, the additivity, additivity assumption says that it does not depend on how many trains you produce. Whether you produce one train, two trains, three trains, four trains, the finishing hour for one soldier is always two hours, such that you can add the total finishing hour for soldier and trains independently. For the divisibility assumption, it says that each decision variable can be allowed to be fractional values. So for example, it is allowed to have x1 equals 2.73 soldiers produced each week. So in reality, it might be strange, but in linear programming, there is this divisibility assumption. 
such that 2.733 soldiers is allowed. If your problem strictly does not allow this thing to happen, then you need to use integer programming, which we will discuss in Operation Research 2. So at this point, uh, you can say that all variables can be fractional. Finally, the certainty assumption says that each parameter, whether it is the parameter in the objective function, right-hand side, or technological coefficient in the constraints, they are all known with certainty. Which means that if you know the finishing hour for one soldier is two hours, you know for certain it's, it is always using two finishing hours. So it never uses like 1.5 hours, or 2.3, or 3.7, or 2.76, or whatever, it is always known for certain that one soldier uses two hours of finishing. So those are four assumptions of linear programming. Later this week, we'll see an example where it actually does not satisfy all of these four assumptions. So for the sake of this course, maybe it's okay because we're just practicing to do formulation. But then if you're doing your own research or solving a real problem, you really need to carefully think about whether that problem can be suitably modeled as a linear programming. Considering that a linear programming problem uh, has these four assumptions underlining the model.